Hi, I'm John Kachoyan, the literary manager of Australian Plays. And we're here today with two of the three creatives, the team behind The Irresistible, a co-production between Side Pony Productions and The Last Great Hunt, presented down at Dark Mofo. We are, we're chatting today on the set. And we are with two of the writers and the cast of the show, Tim Watts and Adrian Daff. Hello. Hello. Hey. Good Thanks thing. for joining us. Thank you and for being for here. And having us on your beautiful set. Ah, yeah. so welcome. Such welcome. As welcome to the other side of the plastic. Yeah, I'm fascinated. If you have ventured this far. <laughs> mm. So can you tell us a little bit about The Irresistible and uh, where this work started? Gosh, it's had quite the journey, hasn't it's, it? Yeah, it really has. And in many ways, it's, um, it's a bit of a byproduct of just a continually, continuing creative relationship between Adrian, myself and Zoe. Um, and through a bunch of different projects, we just keep on, uh, there's, there's like a territory that we keep on wanting to, um, push and explore. And then sometimes it feels tired. So we want to like branch off into other directions. Mm -hmm. And this, this show was meant to be something else, but because of some other projects that we're doing, we kind of lost interest in, we're like, ah, we feel like we've been there. And so we took a really massive, um, left turn. Um, yeah, I would say in like form aesthetic and like certainly not necessarily the way that we make work together but we sort of in our the in the sort of calendar of our minds that that period was like December of 2016 when we gathered uh in Perth at the, at Pika Perth Institute of Contemporary Art mm -hmm. to um begin a development there that ended up being the kind of basis for what the show was when it premiered at Pika in June of 2017 mm. And so, and, yeah. And, and I mean, we went into that development um, with with a show we'd already made mm. um, called The Wives of Hemingway at the time, and that was a uh, very different show. Um, but there was some still some similarities in terms of playing with power and gender, and uh, but but the look of it was like a really crude, lots of wigs and makeup and lots of talk about hair and it was, it was in like, had a real like backyard theatre, a like vibe and really lots of like props and set pieces mm -hmm. and um, and then we just took a really different turn. It was around the time that we were started just playing with microphones and we, and just doing these long extended improvisations where we play with different um, voice modulation like mainly just pitch up and down um that we were like okay maybe the may, maybe the the look and feel of this is something a little bit more um well a little less literal and, and a bit more stripped back yeah or, i don't know tim has something really nice that he says before we make shows that i really like which is when you you sort of discover what the toolkit is or what the what the materials are that you were going to play with. So if the toolkit of the sort of show pre-December 2016 was relying on a lot of makeup, a lot of wigs, a lot of like big sort of costume pieces that post that kind of aha moment that we had, it was really just quite minimalist and stripped back and just using these microphones, which are a sophisticated piece of technology that gives us real places to go yeah. in terms of what we do in the show. But um, quite a departure for us, I think. Certainly, you'd played with microphones before. Certainly, in various I think only a little. Yeah. Only a little, and it was that sense of like we just sort of played with them a little bit. We'd got we'd got the kit for a different show, and sort of had started playing with them. We're like, oh, that's not that's not this show, in terms of like the putting live effects on it and stuff. But and so I, I think we we were kind of just excited about oh, let's let's just go down that path. Yeah. And we had the space to kind of go. Well, let's let's just give a bit more attention to that, mm. um, and 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 as part of that, we did these. What often a really consistent part about the way that Zoe, Adrian, and I work is um, we do very long, extended, weird ass improvs <laughs> that go in all sorts of directions. Like the amount of content that doesn't make it on stage is just staggering. Yeah. Like I, my, I just started smiling because my mind went back to. Remember the couple that we played where you were in jail yeah. and we'd started a relationship when mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like just thinking about there are like prison rides, you hours know? Yeah. and hours and hours of mm. footage that exists on a hard drive yeah. from Zoe somewhere yeah. that has two best friends who are going to start their own business. It's got like just so much yeah. stuff. And so that, is that a fundament of your process that recording and reviewing yes. and refining? How do Great you, question. 
how do you navigate those gear shifts between generating and I mean, who writes the document that becomes the thing that's the script? It's called the well, script. Well, we all kind of do in that there is a there is a notation process which is kind of like going through the improvisations and notating them. So then you have these really really hefty documents where you can kind of pick and choose what really worked, which is why you know Zoe sits through all those <laughs> improvisations, where like me and Tim are sort of like deep in them and the reason they go on for so long is so that we get all of the cliche kind of ideas out in the first couple of 10 minutes when you're like 40 minutes deep you come out of an improvisation like that and you're like I don't know you're not conscious of where that's Mm. come from but when you are kind of like you know we've been working together for a really long time so it's a really exciting place to exist with Tim like on the floor being able to generate in that way which you don't have with everybody it's Mm. not a it's not a given kind of sort of standard when you go into anything with anyone so it's really special to be able to like do that and then we have this big document and Zoe can kind of be like I remember when like that worked really well or the three of us can start to see how one thing can lead into another or so then really a a, a sort of maybe a cast starts to appear a cast of characters and then certainly there is things that we're talking about in discussion that might be around more like things we've researched or things that we're kind of looking into offline uh, outside of the rehearsal room I mean so that they invariably those chats find their way into Mm. the uh, rehearsal period but that could be anything from talking about prison brides to anything else like I'm a big believer that anything that sort of pops into your life when you're working on a show is in some way relevant you're just not sure how yet like your subconscious has like its interest has been peaked and like I think that's cool because you end up getting things that might not seem related in your show. Um, One thing that I really love about The Irresistible is we have one bit in our script that's purposely, purposefully left open to impro every night. Mm. And um, I just think it's really fantastic because, you know, certainly in, in, I think it's fair to say in the time that we've all been working together, it's the bit that this bit has stayed like purposefully open which is really cool. But then it was also really cool when that guy the other day, he wanted to know if the whole thing was improvised, nah. which is correct in a sense, but then it was scripted, but it still had that feel. And I think we owe that to our opening yeah. in that you are like, I feel comfortable with these two people. I yeah, trust them. Exactly. This is going to be okay. So once you, you know, so it's essentially a, a mixture of functioning with choices that are made or that allow you to actually create and then keeping a kind of tension between those choices and an openness in that in yeah. that process. The thing about when you've improvised something is you kind of know what kind of weird intention you had behind a line, whereas <laughs> if you just read the line, which yeah. is why this would be so interesting to, to, to see yeah. how other people yeah. do it, is because you go, that's a weird line, but I say it like this because I know it came from this deep, dark pocket of an improvisation which was about something completely different, but then we've repurposed that for this mm. purpose. So then when we're in the scene, if I want to embellish a little bit or if Adrian, you know, says something else, we know what when it's not just about the words, it's about like yeah, like the intention and, and those moments. Um Yeah, I think this is really interesting because it's almost like the acting comes first. Like I've been in plenty of rooms Sure. With more of a dramaturgical hat on where you see people be like, you repeat this so you don't need to say that. You can cut that word like da-da-da-da-da-da who sort of want to go through and like razor everything down. But it's quite interesting when, yeah, when, when you've acted the line and then you've scripted it, you're like, oh, well, I say Uncle Eric two times because the first time I'm being super scary and then the next time I'm trying to like win him over, whatever it might be, that kind of, you know, boring actor work that you do <laughs> late at night with your pencil. But like it is interesting that in that way it's different to someone that might be like, just cut that Mm. whole Mm. bit. And the videos end up being quite useful in that Mm. way because, so usually, um, Adrian is definitely does the lion's share of the of the of the typing things out and she has an incredible skill for it. If Zoe and I are doing it, we're like, pause. Sorry, ah, oh, now we can go back, and it takes us so long. She can just watch and laugh and keep <laughs> typing, and then have a sip of coffee and then, ah, and just get it like just blow through uh, an, an improvisation and just record everything and then has a good memory for like, oh, and then this bit was funny because of this, blah, blah, blah. So when it comes down to us, like, and I might get the, the thing that's been edited mm. down um, and I go, I don't know what this means. And you're like, oh, and then she gets up the video and you're like, you were a completely different character, but you were doing this and this is how you said it. I'm like, oh, yeah, right. So, so the videos end up being like, 
almost like a little brain reference for for like where that acting moment actually came from. Yeah, and I do find it useful to do the whole lot because we are going to be the ones that act it and you can really see sort of like where it came from. Mm. I think when Zoe goes through the improvisation, she definitely more like cherry picks mm. what she thinks might potentially in some way be useful. But yeah, I tend to... Um, because you can see like the seed of an idea planted 15 minutes mm. ago and mm. then it's like a callback in that moment and we crack up within the improvisation because, you know, we've been existing in this liminal space for like the better part of an hour. <laughs> and, and definitely the, the impros are very verbose and long and, yeah. and, then, yeah. and then what it, like the, that scene might end up coming, like that hour or two might end up coming down to a paragraph if used at all. Yeah, well, like you said, the weird remnant of something finds its way. Yeah. 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 I suppose that's interesting for me in a work that is about um, unconscious bias and, and the subconscious, those strange remnants we carry with us without knowing it and the assumptions we make without being aware of them. Was that always kind of something that flowed under the, the work? Yeah. Like, as, a, as an idea, yes. And I think that... Um, you know, as with a lot of ideas in art, they're fantastic, but it is always like, okay, so how, how is that going to relate either to like form or narrative? And I, I, do, I do feel like we had a bit of a breakthrough when we um, had a showing in that <laughs> famous December that I keep referring to, <laughs> where we were able to, um, we had an idea of something that might work and we were able to show it to a bunch of people and we actually sort of showed three sections and the remember that middle one where we were in the hotel room as Eric and April mm -hmm. it was that one so like and that was a almost like a cycle where we t constantly changed characters and then once we got back to the beginning of the cycle had completely changed over so now you were watching the same thing but our characters were kind of reversed and that I remember we had two other sides um, two other bits on either side and it was that middle chunk where people were like, you might be onto something there. That's really interesting. Um, which is great because you're standing this far away from it and sometimes you don't know, mm -hmm. you know, is this the scribbling of a bunch of mad people? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, are other people just as mad and are they willing to go along for the ride? Yeah. Also, yes. And so the work has been described as kind of sci-fi, I suppose, if you were to give it a, a genre. I'm... I'm a huge fan of sci-fi on stage, but we don't see it as much as perhaps you'd, you'd think. What do you think sci-fi on stage, you know, what's exciting about it for you and, and why, might we, you know, why might it be so absent from the stage? Well, uh, I mean, I'm certainly no expert on sci-fi. I really enjoy it. Mm. Um, uh, I guess I'll just speak to something that I just really like in stories, which I think that sci-fi often uh, encompasses, is a sense of the other that um, something beyond just the daily. Um, and I think that sci-fi sci and things that are a, a little bit other, you know, uh, um, like, like Twin Peaks, even though Twin Peaks isn't, isn't sci-fi, it's got a sense of another realm or another, or, or, yeah, something above our, you know, our current. Yeah, the uncanny. Yeah, yeah, the uncanny is a great way of putting it. Um, and so I think that I often um, am just drawn to stories or subject matter that just pushes things above the and beyond the, the the mundane. And something we did talk about a little bit with this was was not full blown sci fi, but what we referred to as soft sci fi, mm -hmm. where um, where there's just maybe just one element that pushes it outside of um, the daily, and as opposed to it being set in the year thirty forty two mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah. It's, a, it's almost a set of permissions to, to just be a little different or a little sure. stranger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think also as well, you know, and not all sci-fi, but like the, when you think about movie sci-fi and you start thinking about special effects and you start thinking about things that are very difficult, if not impossible, to create live, there's a lovely challenge there in being like, okay, well, how can we do it with smoke, black slime, and like mm. completely analog yeah. like you know there's one particular part in the show that I look forward to speaking to you afterwards that <laughs> really does befuddle some people as to be like how did you do that and like if you knew or once you know you'll be like oh come on no way because it's just yeah. I think that's the joy I think of like analog special effects that mm. I find particularly charming 
um, when something's done really kind of, you know, you always say simply, yeah. but really elegantly. There's an audacity. And that. then it's really obvious. Yeah. Like once you figure out how it's done, you're like, of course, there could be no other way that you could have done that. I think that's like, yeah. And so the, this production of your of your script, as we'll as we'll call it, is relatively technically involving. There's voice mod, cons, consistent voice modulation. There's many characters that are played by two bodies. Mm. Uh, how do you imagine a version of it, or, or what is what what is interesting to you about a version that is perhaps more analog or or, or stripped back? What's the provocation, I suppose, or the joy of a work that is not this production? Well, like sky's the limit, I guess, isn't it? Like I would love to see, you know, as we were saying just before, if someone saw it because they were like, this has got a big cast, there's one relationship in particular where I'd be like, I'd love to see how a, you know, cast of where you've got one actor playing each individual character, I'd love to see what theme or what idea that kicks up for the person who reads the play and is like, I want to do it because for me it's about X mm. and for someone else it's about Y. Like that's kind of the beauty of the written script away from this production is that it's completely open to interpretation. I don't have much experience with people because all the shows that I've made in the past, if I've, if I've, if there's a new cast, it's because I've trained them and mm. I've like become the director yeah. of that. And so the show has remained largely the same version with, you know, maybe a different, you know, different bodies in there. But, um, so I'm pretty interested in, ah, uh, yeah, uh, in 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 what happened. Like for me, it'll be a, a completely different show because for for me, usually when I make theatre, the 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 script is such a small part of the overall experience for the audience. Um, in terms of the um, you know, the the, the internal na- monologue and narrative that they have during the the thing. All the other elements are so much part of there, which aren't necessarily documented as such so I'm pretty fascinated by by what happens when you when you pass on you know this element and then there's a whole other level of interpretive artistry that that happens to remix that and explore that and pull that apart in different ways and see see if it does work maybe maybe it maybe you know it, it might it might highlight what was um at the moment, so bonded to the text, but when you pull those things mm. out, you might go, "Oh, that highlights like exactly. that that doesn't work, or yeah. that actually is the essence of this, and it works in a completely and that's the way it that well not the way it should be done, but it really works, you know, like a like a really inventive cover of a song where you mm. all of a sudden hear words in a different way and or it's sung by a different gender or you, and and you're like, "Oh, this takes on a completely different narrative." when it's sung from this point of view or just the tweaking of lines here and there. And I've never got to be part of that. Um, I've never even really, yeah, got to sit outside and watch someone else have an interpretation of something that I've been a part of. So yeah, I, I'll be front row. Fingers <laughs> crossed. I think. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really interesting process, certainly just coming to the script as a document uh, and being about to see the production, mm. uh, just sort of trying to stay... Uh, sealed off from yeah. the, the production's ideas or the sure. production's images as well yeah. and, and just kind of deal with that thing as a document. But mm. I think there's always a tension between we don't, you know, that document is never going to bring the time that these bodies and, and minds have spent in 40 minute in prose. And mm. I, I find that really interesting. I kind of like there's a something lost in some sense, but something gained in the potential. Yeah. And the funniest thing about the, when we, when I think of the document, like, there's a new version of that document as of yesterday. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We already have plans for what that document will look like when we do the show again in September. So like mm. there is that thing of, you know, at some point, obviously in a process like this, you're like, that's it. But you would be forgiven for like having read that and then coming along and being like, where was this whole <laughs> bit? Because part of the remount is, you know, always being like, and certainly as we've now done it in Perth, in Brisbane, here in Hobart, going on to the Gold Coast and then some dates beyond that, like, you know, once you're there and you're kind of putting it up and putting it together, you have that opportunity to be like, I've been thinking yeah, it's one about of my favorite, this line. Yeah, yeah, well, it's one of my favourite things about theatre is that it's it's never, like, in the can. It's never done. Yeah. Um, you've always whether for better or worse you, either your best show is behind you yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> either best show is behind you or you have you, you've mm. got another reddit in you like you, you, yeah I, I was struck by the play 
so the, the text you know i was struck by the that sort of turn at the end that really made me feel you know realize it was grappling with gender and power mm-hmm. the entire time or, or at least that that was a really a, a more powerful spine to it than i thought about is that something that you've been conscious of that that, that resonates with you as the makers of it yeah and it it's something where when you do think about someone else kind of like approaching the text and where it's not explicitly stated that a, f- a person who identifies as female plays this character that could have a very different, um, you could have a very, very different sort of read and response. Like mm. in our sort of collective minds and something that we've talked about before, so not many to put words in Tim's mouth, but there are certainly passages of text that work in the way we want them to work because I say it or because Tim says it. So it's... Um, and that tension is built into the work. Who, who, yeah. who is saying what body is saying what words at what time yeah. is deeply of, subjective to the experience, I imagine. Part of why the moment worked when we were devising it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's why it's, yeah. Yeah. And so what is that as creators to leave, to send a document into the world in whatever form, a video, a production, a, a text? How, how do you balance what you need to inform people about versus leading, leaving something? I think that's a great question because I, even as I think of that now, I'm like, okay, so do you go back through and do you do one edit of the draft where you say, you call them M and F or you say that like, you know, and what if someone's like, well, hey, I'm like, I'm non-binary, like where do I fit into this? But in some way you have a female identifying and a male identifying performer and that you actually, like, do you do a really comprehensive version of the draft where you say that explicitly? This person is like now this and this person is that to be really prescriptive or do you not because you're like well that's how we did it but that doesn't have to be how you do it Mm. i don't know i'm not sure what the answer is but i definitely see the sort of two ways that you could go in regards to that sort of gender question also like the 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 subject matter of gender and power has has obviously been a big part of the collective dialogue since while you know, over the time that we've yeah, been making totally. this yeah. and that is that has shifted quite a lot and in our first season we'll probably be a bit more explicit uh, and we've pulled some of that stuff out to try and make it a little bit just a, a little bit more timeless as opposed to mm. um, of a time mm. and but inevitably over the next four years that will ch- and, and the collective unconscious bias will hopefully also shift so the nuance of those um, themes will hopefully, you know, by, by the artist be taken on, be, be, be tackled with a sense of delicacy of that time and mm. wherever they are. So to, to sort of root it in the, um, what worked for us as the politics of the time might be a little bit... Uh, Short-sighted. Yeah, and yeah. restrictive. Um, yeah, because we've, yeah, even as we keep going, we're, um, uh, we've been quite deliberate about the need to be more or less explicit as it's kind of gone on. But certainly in in the creation of it, um, it was, uh, I feel like I learnt a lot uh, and and uncovered a lot of my unconscious bias. And, and also as a collective, um, we, we sort of really butted up against our in- instincts mm. of storytelling mm. um, where we would have um, uh, our our male characters all of a sudden just take on more responsibility of 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 characters and just they, they would just become more three dimensional and then we'd pull ourselves back and go oh crap we've we've done we did it ourselves um okay 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 and then and then the the female characters you know if they if they had done something bad then there were those weird instincts to and then dramaturgically they get punished in some way and it was like whoa, whoa what do we mm. we keep on we kept on coming up against these these um things that were really easy in story and then things where we were like gosh yeah. this feels like a real brain yeah crunch like you're quite right we talked a lot about like sort of male gaze and female gaze yeah. and sort of what that meant for like story as well and i often said you know there was like a realization that we came to not too, uh, not too long before we opened, where we were like, 
oh gosh, we've made a story about like this, this and this, like this sort of very, very like tropey thing, which was like, we're, and we were deliberately trying not to. It was yeah. like, and then it sort of dawns on you that, that was that's probably going to be our life's work as as artists to try and deprogram in that way. And so, if this is just the first step and the first offering, that's also okay because mm. it is it's a lot of work to to deprogram. We've got to wrap up, yeah. but thank you so much for coming in. Pleasure. Tell us interest, about the really. irresistible. Thank you. Very excited. Um, hopefully, have a read and good luck with the rest of the season. Thank, thank, thank you, you so much. much.